Hi everybody and welcome to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. On this video we've got a story from Am I the A-hole with an update and one from Tales from the Front Desk. So if you want to go ahead and get started with the stories just use the timestamps below the video. I'd also like to give a big shout out to all my supporters and the new members that have been coming in. It makes a huge difference and it really means a lot to me so thank you very much. Now let's get started with that first story. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user Fishing Under the Sun. Am I the A-hole for not shaving my head to support my best friend? I, 24 female, have known my best friend Grace, 24 female, since we were 11 years old and I love her to bits. We've been each other's rocks throughout all our hard times, so obviously I was devastated for her when she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer a few weeks ago. Thankfully, her prognosis is optimistic, but she needs surgery and is about to begin chemo. I cried a lot when I first heard about her prognosis, but Grace is one of those people who uses humor to cope in hard times and she's been powering through it with her head held high. She's honestly my hero. We have a group of good mutual friends we've known since school, and yesterday they invited me to a video call without Grace. One of our friends told us about an idea she had that we should all shave our heads in support of Grace since she's going to lose her hair and make a video to put on Instagram and Facebook and the like. Everyone else looked a bit horrified when I firmly said I wouldn't be doing that. I never had long hair my entire childhood as it's very thick and my mom didn't want to deal with it and after having short hair as a teenager I decided to grow it out. I haven't had a proper haircut since I was 17 and now it's almost long enough that I can sit on it. So I'm not keen to shave it off and start again. As someone who has lost close relatives to cancer, I also feel really uncomfortable with people who shave their heads in support as to me it just seems like performative activism to get attention on social media. My friends all went off at me about how I'm selfish and have no empathy for Grace and what she's going through. But I don't think that you should have to put yourself through someone else's struggle in order to support them. I left the call and woke up this morning to a tidal wave of messages from other friends and family asking me why I was so nasty to my friends when they just wanted to help. I don't think it's made it through to Grace yet. The head shaving is meant to be a surprise. And if it has, she hasn't talked to me about it. At this point, I'm questioning if I'm really being selfish and horrible because I adore Grace with all my heart, but I really don't want to lose my hair as well. I'm beginning to think that my views are actually harmful and I might be being an unsupportive friend by not doing this. So, am I the a-hole for not shaving my head to support my best friend? OP, in my opinion, you're not the a-hole and the friend that came up with the idea is just trying to get some Facebook likes to stroke her own ego by showing people how awesome and good she is or whatever. Honestly, I don't understand how people do that because I do not see how somebody else shaving their head is going to help the person going through cancer. Maybe I'm too pragmatic or an a-hole, but I just don't see it. You know what I do think actually helps somebody that's going through a tough time like your friend Grace? Actually being there for them. Whether it is for emotional support or taking them to the hospital if they need to or being with them after they've had their chemo sessions to help them out or things like that. But to me, the people that like to show their support by making a whole show of it on Facebook and Instagram, that's all it is. It's just a show for likes and I think it's ridiculous. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section and now let's go through the community comments to see their judgment. Nika Sunshine 1990 says, Not the a-hole. You're correct. Why do they need to blast this on social media except for the look at how supporting we're being? You know what's supportive for your friend? Being there for her, helping with appointments, sitting there while she's getting treatment, listening to her needs, wants, fears. What does shaving your head do? I think you should continue to be the best friend you can be and if anyone gives you crap, Tell them to F off and stop being attention seekers. Buklim Peter says, Not the a-hole. Your friends are idiots. Even if we accept that shaving their heads is supporting Grace, questionable, why do you have to support her in the same way as them? 
I'm sure Grace will need lots of things in the coming days. Someone to hang out, lunch and cry with, someone to run errands, etc. Why are you not just as good a friend as these transparently Instagram clout chasing knuckleheads? Beginning Brain 3009 says, Not the a-hole. Not all people who go through chemo lose all their hair for one thing. For another, seeing all her friends bald could be a constant reminder of something she probably won't want to focus on all the time. If she does lose her hair, it may also take much longer for hers to grow back than your friends, and that will also hurt. They have good intentions, it seems, but the execution leaves something to be desired. If they want to shave their heads, that's fine, their choice. But to push it on someone who isn't interested is pretty bad. You can support in many other ways, and I'm sure you will. Well, the community says that OP is not the a-hole, and the majority of them also think the friends are being idiots. They also gave OP many examples of ways that she can be supportive to her friend without having to shave her head, and that even though if somebody else might want to do that, they shouldn't be pushing it on OP. Anyways, OP has given us an update two months after the original post. So, how about we continue with that and see how this story unfolded? It's been way too long, but the dust has settled, so I'm finally able to give an update on the situation. Thank you for the awards and all the love and support for both me and Grace. I'm happy to say that she is doing very well and is still in great spirits nearly two months into chemo. I haven't been able to see her in person much, which is horrible, but we spend most of our days on FaceTime and I've been giving all the support I can. After my first post, I made what I think most would agree was the smartest decision and told Grace about our friend's plans. She actually laughed it off. She didn't think they were serious and that they'd really do it. Unfortunately, I got an invitation to a Zoom call with Grace and the rest of the group not long after I made the post and immediately got an awful feeling. I really didn't want to, but I went because I wanted to be there to defend either Grace or myself, depending on what went down. As soon as I arrived, I was horrified to see that three of our friends had already shaved their heads and another was planning to do it in front of Grace during the call. Long story short, Grace was absolutely mortified. She absolutely decimated them about how they never should have done this without her permission or even telling her it was going to happen. And instead of feeling supported, she now has a constant reminder of the fact that she has cancer. We both accused them of being self-centered and narcissistic people who didn't really care about her or her illness and only wanted to do it to A. Post on social media and get attention and B. Have people ask why they did it and tell them what a good person and a good friend they are. I was trying to keep composed because it didn't feel like my fight to lead, but Grace did not hold back and used far more colorful language. As I said in my last post, she's my absolute hero. Needless to say, neither of us are in contact with those four people anymore. Though we are civil with the others from the initial call about the head shaving who didn't actually go through with it. Both Grace and I are very happy that I decided to tell her beforehand, so it wasn't as much of a shock when it happened, and she's glad she doesn't have to endure what would likely have been a lot of mock support from our ex-friends throughout her cancer journey. And for some extra satisfaction for everyone who was as mad about the situation as I was, Although Grace says it has thinned, as of right now, she hasn't lost any hair. Well, Opie, I agree with you. Grace sounds awesome. She totally called out those idiots and now they are categorized as ex-friends. And the great silver lining is that Grace hasn't lost a hair and those ex-friends have shaved heads. But that's just me being petty. Anyways, now we move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Tales from the Front Desk and it's by user RebuildCollapse679. I guess I'm a sabotaging moron? I work front desk for a small boutique hotel. We cater to an upscale clientele and my direct supervisors are the owners of the property. Fourth of July weekend, I check in one of my regular couples with our holiday weekend romance package and for once had good news. When the gentleman booked the reservation, he requested their favorite room, 712 which is a junior suite. 
At the time, all junior suites were booked, so he booked a Premier King and asked if a junior suite became available, would I change room types for them and just leave him a voicemail to let him know. I confirmed the telephone number and asked that if he does not answer, do I have his permission to leave a detailed message with whoever answers or leave a voicemail. He responds that I am at complete and total liberty to do both. And if I just happen to lose the reservation for whoever has booked room 712, he'd appreciate it. To my complete and utter shock, we received a few cancellations, including a junior suite. So I moved a few people around, locked them into 712 and left a voicemail with the good news. I told the couple the good news at check-in and asked him if he received the voicemail. He said he did not, but has been traveling for work and had not been in the office, so it will be waiting for him when he got back to work after vacation. Thanked me for making the switch and calling. So off to the room they went. The following Friday, the owner called me into his office. With him in the office is a lawyer with a court order for security camera footage and receipts for certain dates. The lawyer is joined by his client. I guessed her to be in her late 50s well-dressed with a smile that screams loving grandma. Boss man and lawyer leave me to pull up the receipts. Front desk, food and beverage, and minibar. They want it all. As they go play with the security footage. As I print up each receipt, this poor lady looks sadder by the minute. Each page printed seems to break her heart. I offer her water or coffee. She asks if we have tea or a shot of whiskey. I oblige with both and a blueberry muffin. She then starts with her story. The lawyer is her divorce attorney, and if I didn't guess sooner, the gentleman I checked into room 712 was her husband, and the woman he checked in with that time and all the times prior was not her. Her husband had been traveling for work for almost a month, was due back home in about a week. She was very upset he was gone for the holiday weekend, especially since her birthday was the third. She said he promised to make it up to her. So that voicemail I left was on their home answering machine. She said she thought it was him surprising her. She packed a bag and waited for him to arrive to pick her up. And of course, he never did. She thought maybe the message was a mistake. So she called the hotel and asked for her husband's room. And sure enough, he picked up the phone in his room. She hung up without uttering a word. Then, she researched the best most expensive divorce attorneys in her area and was in that office first thing after the holiday weekend. And that was after she changed the locks on the house, changed banking passwords and cancelled a few credit cards. From what she told me, she and her husband were high school sweethearts. She worked two jobs while also taking classes at a local junior college after high school to pay for her husband to attend college all the way through to his masters was a stay-at-home mom for their three kids so he could concentrate on his career. However, before they married, she asked for an ironclad prenup. She had heard so many horror stories of men becoming successful and cheating on their wives, leaving them for their secretaries, taking the home and family income with them. And she said she was not going to be one of those abandoned wives. So in their prenup, there was an infidelity clause. Proven infidelity meant she got the house, the boat, the summer house, half of his 401k and an obscene monthly alimony payment. And between the room charges, food and beverage receipts and intimacy kits purchased from the minibar, I think she has that proof beyond a reasonable doubt. And about 90 minutes ago, I answered the phone to be called every foul name you can think of telling me I was going to be fired, that he was going to sue the hotel because I'm too big of an idiot to call a correct phone number. Turns out, the cheating bastard accidentally gave me permission to confirm the room upgrade to the wrong telephone number. Thought he gave his office number and instead he gave his home telephone. This jerk went so far as to say we looked up his home telephone number just to sabotage him. That was until Bossman pulled up the recording of the telephone call where he made the reservation, where I confirmed the telephone number, which was in fact his home telephone number. This was followed by his absolute consent to leave a detailed message. After listening to said recording, the cheating bastard uttered a single, oh, and hung up on us. 
Guess he came home and found the locks changed? Wow, OP, that was some ride. Thanks for sharing. I do feel sorry for this lady. I mean, having spent her whole life with this douchebag. The good thing is that she now gets to get rid of him and take him through the cleaners. So that's a positive, I guess. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I certainly did reading them to you. So if you did, then go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and become a member of our Discord community that just keeps growing and it is fantastic. And like I said in the beginning of the video, all of the relevant links are in the video description below. So be sure to check them out. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys enjoy this content. So thank you once again. And having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.